This video provides an overview of the major concepts covered in Chapter 16, Foreign Exchange Derivative Markets. In recent years, various derivative instruments have been created to manage or capitalize on exchange rate movements. Given that the potential benefits from using foreign exchange derivatives depend on the expected exchange rate movements, it's necessary to understand why exchange rates change over time before exploring the use of foreign exchange derivatives. Chapter 16 includes five key learning objectives. First, to provide a background on foreign exchange markets. Second, to explain how various factors affect exchange rates. Third, to explain how to forecast exchange rates. Fourth, to describe the use of foreign exchange rate derivatives. And fifth, to explain international arbitrage. So let's begin with the background on foreign exchange markets and systems. Foreign exchange markets facilitate international trade and international investment transactions. They enable firms, government agencies, and individuals to sell their currencies in exchange for the currencies they need to execute their international transactions. The spot market facilitates foreign exchange transactions for immediate exchange at what's known as the spot rate. Exchange rate quotations may either be direct or indirect. The direct exchange rate specifies the value of a currency in US dollars. The indirect exchange rate specifies the number of units of a currency equal to a US dollar, so it's the reciprocal of the direct exchange rate. Most exchange rate quotation tables express currencies relative to the dollar. In some instances, however, the exchange rate between two non-dollar currencies is needed. Instead of exchanging currencies immediately in the spot market, firms, government agencies, or individuals may want to lock in the exchange rate for a transaction to be conducted in the future by negotiating a forward contract with a commercial bank that allows the purchase or sale of a specified amount of a particular foreign currency at a specified exchange rate, known as the forward rate, on a specified future date. This exhibit summarizes how financial institutions utilize the foreign exchange rate markets and foreign exchange derivatives. Large commercial banks commonly provide international loans to businesses in foreign countries. In addition, many mutual funds, pension funds, and insurance companies invest in foreign securities. As financial institutions increase their participation in international transactions, they rely more heavily on foreign exchange markets to exchange currencies and on foreign exchange derivatives to hedge their investment in foreign securities. The exchange rates of major currencies float relative to other countries without government-imposed boundaries, though a government may still intervene in the foreign exchange markets to influence the market value of its currency. A system with no boundaries and in which exchange rates are market determined but still subject to government intervention is called a dirty float, whereas in a freely floating system the foreign exchange rate is totally free from government intervention. Some countries today use a pegged exchange rate system. For example, Hong Kong has tied the value of its currency, the Hong Kong dollar, to the US dollar since 1983. Thus, its currency value is fixed relative to the US dollar, which means that its value moves in tandem with the US dollar against other currencies. In January 1999, the euro replaced the national currency of 11 European countries, and since then, nine more countries have converted their home currency to the euro. The European Central Bank, or ECB, is responsible for setting monetary policy for all countries in the eurozone. The bank's objective is to maintain price stability in these countries, as it believes that price stability is necessary to achieve economic growth. During the 2010 to 2015 period, Greece suffered from a weak economy and a large government budget deficit. Debt rating agencies lowered the country's debt rating substantially, which increased the government's cost of borrowing. Portugal and Spain also experienced severe financial problems, and the economies of Italy and Ireland weakened as well. During this Eurozone crisis, institutional investors moved their investments out of the Eurozone and into other regions, which placed downward pressure on the Euro's exchange rate. When a government in the Eurozone is unable to obtain sufficient credit to cover its budget deficit, it may need to rely on the ECB for funds. However, when the ECB provides credit to a country as it did for Greece, it imposes austerity conditions that are intended to help the government resolve its budget deficit problems over time. Some critics have argued that a country's government should abandon the euro rather than accept from the ECB because the austerity conditions imposed by this institution are too harsh. If a country abandons the euro, it may cause fear that other countries will follow, which would cause the euro's value to collapse. Next, let's look at factors affecting exchange rates. As the value of a currency adjusts to changes in demand and supply conditions, it moves towards equilibrium. In equilibrium, there's no excess or deficiency of that currency. A currency's supply and demand are influenced by three key factors, starting with differential inflation rates. 
Assume an equilibrium situation exists, and consider what would happen to the U.S. demand for euros and to the supply of euros for sale if U.S. inflation suddenly becomes much higher than European inflation. The U.S. demand for European goods would increase, reflecting an increased U.S. demand for euros. Conversely, the supply of euros to be sold for dollars will decline as the European desire for U.S. goods decreases. Both forces will place upward pressure on the value of the euro. Interest rate movements also affect interest rates by influencing the capital flows between countries. An increase in interest rates may attract foreign investors, especially if the higher interest rates do not reflect an increase in inflationary expectations. Central banks commonly consider adjusting a currency's value to influence economic conditions. A country's government can intervene in the foreign exchange market to affect a currency's value. Direct intervention occurs when a country's central bank sells some of its currency reserves for a different currency. The Fed can affect the dollar's value indirectly by influencing the factors that determine its value. For example, the Fed can attempt to lower or raise interest rates by influencing the U.S. money supply through its monetary policy actions. Currency crises in Mexico, many Asian countries, Brazil, Russia, Turkey, and most recently Lebanon have led to similar actions by the local governments. These crises were often preceded by massive inflows of foreign funds from foreign investors who wanted to capitalize on investment opportunities in the country. Now let's move on to forecasting exchange rates. The decision by institutional investors to invest in foreign countries are commonly influenced by their expectations of future exchange rates. They often hedge their exposure if they anticipate a decline in the value of the currency denominating their investments. Alternatively, they may take positions in foreign exchange derivatives to benefit from the expectation that specific currencies will strengthen. For all of these activities, market participants need to develop a forecast of exchange rates. Technical forecasting involves the use of historical exchange rate data to predict future values. For example, the fact that a given currency has increased in value over four consecutive days may suggest how the currency will move tomorrow. A computer program can be developed to detect particular historical trends. Fundamental forecasting is based on fundamental relationships between economic variables and exchange rates. Given current values of these variables along with their historical impact on a currency's value, corporations can develop exchange rate projections. For example, High inflation in a given country can lead to a depreciation in its currency. Market-based forecasting, or the process of developing forecasts from market indicators, is usually based on either the spot rate or the forward rate. As the spot rate is derived from the demand for and supply of a currency in the market, it may represent a reasonable expectation of that currency's value in the very near future. Finally, because no single forecasting technique has been found to be consistently superior to the others, some market participants use a combination of forecasting techniques known as mixed forecasting using a weighted average approach. The fourth concept in the chapter relates to foreign exchange derivatives which can be used to speculate on foreign exchange rate movements or to hedge anticipated cash inflows or outflows in a given foreign currency. Forward contracts enable a firm to lock in the price to be paid for a foreign currency at a specified date in the future. Thus, forward purchases or sales can hedge the firm's risk that the currency's value may change over time. A corporation receiving payments denominated in a particular foreign currency in the future can lock in the price at which the currency can be sold by selling that currency forward. The forward rate of a currency may sometimes exceed the existing spot rate, so that it represents a premium. At other times, it may be below the spot rate, so it represents a discount. Forward contracts are sometimes referred to in terms of their percentage premium or discount rather than their actual rate. An alternative to the forward contract is a currency futures contract, which is a standardized contract that specifies an amount of a particular currency to be exchanged on a specified date and at a specified exchange rate. A firm can purchase a futures contract to hedge payables in foreign currency by locking in the price at which it could purchase that specific currency at a particular point in time. To hedge receivables denominated in a foreign currency, the firm could sell futures, thereby locking in the price at which it would sell that currency. A currency swap is an agreement that allows one currency to be periodically swapped for another at specified exchange rates. It essentially represents a series of forward contracts. Another foreign exchange derivative used for hedging is the currency option. Its primary advantage over forward and futures contracts is its stipulation that the parties have the right but not the obligation to purchase or sell a particular currency at a specified price within a given period. 
A currency call or put option provides the right to purchase or sell a particular currency at a specified price, called the exercise price, within a specified period. Foreign exchange derivatives can also be used for speculating as well as for hedging via either currency futures or currency options. The final concept in the chapter relates to international arbitrage. Exchange rates and exchange rate derivatives are determined by the market. If they become misaligned, various forms of arbitrage can occur, forcing realignment. Locational arbitrage is the act of capitalizing on a discrepancy between the spot exchange rate at two different locations by purchasing the currency where it's priced low and selling it where it's priced high. If the quoted cross exchange rate between two foreign currencies is not aligned with the two corresponding exchange rates, a discrepancy exists in the exchange rate quotations. Under this condition, investors can engage in triangular arbitrage, which involves buying or selling the currency that's subject to a mispriced cross exchange rate. And finally, the coexistence of international money markets and forward markets creates a special relationship between a forward rate premium and the interest rate differential of the two countries, known as interest rate parity. Interest rate parity suggests that the forward rate premium or discount should be equal to the differential in interest rates between the countries of concern. If this relationship does not hold, market forces should act to restore it. The act of capitalizing on this discrepancy between the forward rate premium and the interest rate differential is called covered interest arbitrage.